if I divide up my salt of revolution, slice it up like salami, you get these guys, these cylinders. This is the volume of a cylinder, and you add up a whole bunch of them. No big deal, okay? But if I can rotate around this axis, then it stands to reason that I can rotate around well, any axis I like, and I will still get a shape which I can divide up into these salami cylinders, right? So you have a look at this for me for a second. The first thing I want to point out is, you can see parts of this curve, like they wiggle around, and they would be weird if we rotated around any axis. So you can still do them. But I don't care what's happening down here if the interval that I'm integrating over is up here. Right? So this can do whatever. This is the particular, these are the boundaries that are going to create my volume. Okay? Now, just like before, I'm going to pull out one of these slices. Okay? So here's what it looks like. And just like before, I need to know radius and I need to know height in order to work out the volume of this individual cylinder. Okay? But because you can see I've drawn this completely differently, right? all the bits are different. Right? For starters, the height, thankfully, is an actual height this time. It's actually vertical. But seeing as it's vertical, it's no longer going to be dx. It will be dy. dy right? And conversely, because the radius here is now on the horizontal axis, right? these are my radii forming here, then they're not going to be y values, they are going to be x values. Okay? So when you work out the volume of this individual cylinder, it's going to be pi times the radius, which is x <coughs> squared, times the height. Okay? And then you form your integral just like you did before. Total volume equals, all right, here we go, from, now you can see I've made my boundaries C and D. Okay? So from C to D of pi x squared dy. Now it doesn't take that much imagination to see that it is wildly easy to confuse this formula for volume with this formula for volume. Which one is which? Okay. Now the way that I remember it, the way that helps me is to say, okay, which is the operating part here? Which is the thing that's doing the action? Okay. And in the same way that if I gave you a function, Right? And then I said, differentiate this with respect to x. Right? That dx is what's telling you what's going on. Right? That's the guy that's kind of like, that's like the pilot that's setting the direction for this thing. Okay? In the same way, over here with our original volume, you are rotating. And which axis are you rotating around? X. The x-axis. Right? So that's why this is with respect to x. You're rotating around that axis. Here, you're rotating around the vertical axis. So this is integrating with respect to y. So think about this guy. This is the guy doing the operating, right? Here is the volume when rotating around the x-axis. Here's the volume when rotating around the y-axis. Now, just to um, go back, right? Notice I've got x squared dy. So I need, uh, I had y as a function of x here, right? So you would just sub in, for instance, the example we just did, we went 0 to 2 pi what did we say? X. x squared squared dx, right? Do you remember that? Over here, I mean, I know that's not the particular example that I drew here, but if I were taking that same curve, x squared, right, and I wanted to consider the volume when I rotate around the y-axis, all right, I would say, okay, well, my boundaries are not going to be 0 to 2 anymore. This is x squared, right? So it'd be 0 to 4, I think. That's 2 squared. And then when I put in x squared, well, hold on a second. The graph that I'm interested in right now is y equals x squared. So instead of x squared, I just write y. And then I integrate with respect to y. When you did like the integration of that on volume, the graph isn't y equals x squared, is it? Like no, this is a like this picture and this picture have nothing to do with this function that we were actually working with before. These are just examples that I've just shown so you can visually so see what's going on. If you were doing it for that particular figure, yes. would you have to not write x squared but write functional for the cubic? Okay, so for example, if this was um if this this is gonna be something actually very messy, okay? okay? Because you would typically expect to get a function like this as y equals, you know, x cubed minus two. I've already proven I'm very bad at doing this, but anyway, yeah. I'm gonna try anyway. If you got something like that, I need to get y, this is y as a function of x, right? 
I would need to get x as a function of y, which is pretty much a disaster. You will never get a question like that. What you might get was something like this. Suppose, and this is not the graph anymore, okay? But suppose you got this. That's doable, right? What I need now is x squared. How do I get x squared out of that? Okay, first I'm gonna have to take the cube root. So I'm gonna go cube root of y equals x minus one. I need to get the x by itself, so I say x equals the cube root of y plus 1, right? And then lastly, I want x squared, not x. So I'm going to take that whole thing and I'm going to square it. Now that, that also looks bad, doesn't it? But it's okay, it's okay. The cube root of y is y to the power of a third, right? So this looks to me like it'll be y to the power of two thirds plus 2y to the power of one third plus 1. And that's actually quite easy to integrate, right? You do all the powers plus one, bring the power out the front, sorry, divide by the power, you'll be fine, okay? So, we'll have a look a bit more of those tomorrow and also what happens when you get hollow parts inside of your solid, okay? Thanks, everyone.